Yeah? How'd you figure it out? How'd you do it, Doug? Um, I just mashed up the ones with zero, basically. <coughs> which one was which zero? Well, I went until the first first one, and I matched it with the first preceding zero that had not been matched. All right, so, so Doug's strategy is, is to go left to right, find the first one he sees, and match it with the zero that precedes it. Provided that hasn't already been used. OK. So you do that, and you match these. Yeah. And now what do you do? Go to the next uh, one. Zero, one. OK, and you match them. Match and what about now you get another one? What do you it match? Matches to? with the zero, the third zero. OK, so if you were doing this as a computer, you might have had these zeros stacked up, so to speak, somewhere. And when you get to the next one, you would back up and look at them. Right? There's kind of this natural stack thing where you're holding the zeros. And when you get to a one, you match the, the one with the zero that you saw most recently. A simpler way would just be to count, make sure they're equal number, and then make sure it ends with a one, since it starts with a zero. Uh, and yeah, one. maybe. You have to have more zeros than ones. You have to have more zeros and ones along the whole way. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That would be yeah. equivalent. Yeah. In fact, that's what I asked you to prove in the homework, the last homework. There was a reason I put that completely arbitrary problem on the homework. It was a review for discrete math, but also I want you to think about grammars and parsing already. But let's go with your, this strategy is fine. It's perfectly reasonable. You want to match these two now? Yeah. And then we continue, so these two match. Yeah. And then this one matches with one. this one. And now 0, 0, 1, so these two match. And these two match. We're at the empty string, and we're OK. So we could write some kind of program based on this strategy that would read this string and tell us yes or no. Right? How does this program that you just wrote connect to actually coming up with a sequence of derivations that end up with a string? Or does it connect to it? In other words, I want to start from s and end up with this. What should, find, what, what should my first production be? You got three choices. Let me give you the one choice that's pretty bad. I'll rule this one out for you. <laughs> Don't use the empty string. You got two choices. Which one do you use? Michael, did you say? Why do you use ss? Because well, I can see there's a Right, Michael's smart, Michael's got eyes, and Michael sees that there's this spot here where this on its own can be generated as a balanced set of parentheses. So this could have an S that generates it. And this is also what's on its own as a balanced set of parentheses. This would have an S that generates it. And moreover, the whole thing, if you take away the 0 and 1 on the ends and then look at what's in the middle, that is not a balanced set of parentheses. So if you use this and you started with this, you would never get this string. You would continue on for a long time, trying lots of possibilities, and you would never succeed. If you started with 0s1, you would never succeed because s would never be able to generate the string starting from here and ending here. So is there a unique, what would you call this, production that will produce that string? Or are there That's a good question. And we'll make that question more specific in a minute, and we'll answer it. It's a very important question. Yeah, Gary. There's not a unique way of parenthesizing. There are alternate ways you could have, you could have done this. Oh, I don't know. Is that true? I think so. How else could we have done it? I'm not sure there is another way. I mean, okay. we went through Doug's algorithm. We, we did exactly what he said, and there was no choice along the way. So I don't think there's any other way to put these, put, to pair up these zeros and ones. I think that's the only way. There may be another way of generating this, but, but we certainly can't start with 0s1. That won't work. And Michael's idea to start with ss, that does work. So we'll start with ss. And now what should our next step be? Think of this s as generating this left part, and think of this s as generating the right part. Each one of these is a balanced paren on its own, which has a 0 and 1 on the end of it. Notice this one has this long span, and this one has this long span. And in the inside is another set of balanced parentheses. So Chris is right. For both of these, we can substitute 0s1. And in fact, we should. We have to. If we do ss for both of these, we're just not going to make it. This is not made up of two concatenated sets of balanced parentheses. It's made up of 
one set surrounded by a 0 and a 1. So there's only been one correct choice so far every stage of the way. Everyone agree? Now, so we're going to substitute. Which one should we do first, the left or the right? All right. And now, now I guess we'll do the left. Or should we do the right again? All right, so you have discovered what's called a rightmost derivation. When you do this, you always have a choice of which one to substitute for next. So you just randomly go substitute? Well, you can. But very often, in order to keep things organized, we either fix on the left one or we fix on the right one. And we always substitute either for the right one or for the left one, depending. They're equally OK. One is called a leftmost derivation. One is called a rightmost derivation. So this, so far, is a rightmost derivation. All right. Now, just for a moment, let me tell you why we do that. Say I did the left one now. I got 0, s1, 0, s1, right? That's what we said we would do. Now, let's consider this alternative. I end up in the same place, but here, I substituted the right one first and then the left one. Here I substituted the left one first and then the right one. Would you call these two derivations the same or different? Or what difference does it make? So when we talk about grammars, we don't like to think of these two things as different. They're essentially the same. We made the same substitution in each one. We just did it in a different order. One time we did the right first, one time we did the left first. But for the most part, it looks the same. Now, in order to make that more rigorous, if you always take the left one first, then there's never any question. Then these two would never both show up. Only one of them would show up. If you always take the right one first, only one of them would show up. And that makes it more unique. In other words, two derivations are different only if their leftmost derivations are different, or two derivations are different only if their rightmost derivations are different. But if you can get two different derivations where you mixed it up left and right, that doesn't mean that they're different. We'll talk a little more about that right now. Here's a better way to write derivations as a tree. S goes to SS. The left S goes to where? I made a mistake here somewhere? Show me. No. Okay. What's your question, Chris? I'm confused because it doesn't seem like you're splitting to get the two S's, really. Where? Here? No. Either way, I guess. I don't know. That seems like one state. No, here S split into two parts. Here's the left S, here's the right S. All right. Is it, okay. Here are those two parts again. And now the left one turns into a 0, that's a terminal symbol, an S and a 1. And the right one turns into a 0, an S, and a 1. When you write it as a tree, the question of which one you did first becomes moot. You, you can't see the difference. It looks like a tree. But if I went ahead and started with a different one, like this, well, these two trees look different. OK? So if the trees look different, it's a different derivation. Or equivalently, if the leftmost derivation is different, then it's a different derivation. If they're the same, it's the same derivation. If the trees look identical, it's the same derivation. So, so far, we've only got a unique derivation to find this string. And this is it so far, and we're going to continue. Let's continue here on the left side. Let's do, use the tree, because this is ugly, and it takes a long time to write it out in the long line. I think the tree's a little broader. It gets it all. So this is the left part. The left part splits into 0, s1. So the s over here should reflect and get that guy. What should we do? Let's keep working on this left side. Now what? We do have an option here because we can pick up the S's. Good, good. Now for the first time, we have an option to make two different trees. We can either put our two S's on the left side, making this S, the left one, have the two parts. Or we can have the left one have a single part and the right S 